Welcome, everybody. We are here today to talk about chip number 26 from Brandon. This is going to be a new wallet sync protocol. And the description is wallet protocol messages for syncing coins and transactions from a node. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Uh, Brandon, I think you're pretty well known in the community, but you want to just quick introduce yourself before we get into it? Uh, yep, I am uh, Brandon Hector. I'm a software engineer at uh, GN Network, and I also uh, develop wallet projects on the side um, for fun and uh, various contracting uh, jobs as well. And um, I got into Chia a few years ago, and ever since then, Chia Lisp and uh, wallet development has been my passion. Um, it's pretty much all I spend my time on. <laughs> yep. Well, you can't go wrong there. Nope. It's a lot of fun. So let's get into it. Uh, let's. Can you explain what your chip is first? Yep. So this chip adds um, a new set of messages to the uh, wallet protocol, and the light wallet protocol, um, especially regarding syncing uh, puzzle hashes and coin IDs for a wallet. Um, currently, there are a few limitations when doing though when doing that. Um, primarily, if you have more uh, coin records than can fit in a response uh, from a request, then it will be truncated and you won't get all of the coin records. And this can cause a uh, denial of service if someone were to spam your address, for example. You would no longer be able to sync all of your coins. Um, you're also not able to request coins without subscribing to the address indefinitely. Um, and there's a subscription limit. So eventually the node will no longer accept your requests to uh, request the coin records. Um, so I have devised a new way of syncing coin records uh, with the Light Wallet protocol that can solve these issues and make it more hardened against reorgs. Um, instead of requesting all of the coin records for a set of puzzle hashes in one response, you can request them in pages, starting with the genesis block and working your way up the, the chain until you've reached the peak. And you can use the header hash of the previous block to identify um, the exact point in the chain that you last subscribed from. That way, if a reorg were to occur between then, you would know about it and be able to um, adjust by starting the sync from either Genesis or a while back. Um, it also enables you to filter by spent, unspent, hinted, or dust coins um, to reduce the load on both the node and the amount of time it takes for the wallet to make the request. And you can subscribe uh, optionally, so that way if you just want to request a set of coin records given a list of IDs, you can do that without subscribing to them. And as well as this, um, the ability to listen for transactions in the mempool that match your subscriptions is something that I want to add as well. Um, it's not currently implemented in the PR, but it's something that I intend to develop as part of this chip. Um, it'll be an opt-in capability that will allow you to uh, receive any update on transactions added or removed from the mempool that match your puzzle hashes and coin IDs that you're subscribed to. Great. Thanks for the explanation. Uh, would you mind going over that cat syncing thing that we were talking about before? Is that part of this? Sorry. Uh, it's unrelated, sorry. Oh, it's unrelated. Oh, sorry. I assumed it was. Okay. And have you done any sort of performance testing on this too to see what the improvements are? So I modified the uh, pure subscription store and made sure that that uh, was as performant as it was before. I haven't done any stress testing of the um, of the new syncing protocol yet, although I have uh, written unit tests that uh, try to sync a lot of uh, coin records at once using this new protocol, and they seem to be reasonably performant. Um, so I'm going to continue testing that uh, over the next couple of weeks and write a wallet against this so that I can get a more real-world uh, example of how it works. 
Okay, cool. And other than the the mempool additions that you're making, is is this more or less complete? Beyond, I mean, as far as adding the code and and now you're on the, the testing phase for the most part. I believe so. This is all I'm committing to currently. Uh, there might be a couple more messages that would be nice to get in, such as requesting the maximum cost of the mempool and uh, maximum block cost. Uh, that way you can determine how many more transactions can fit into the block, for example. But uh, this is really the, the bulk of what's going into this proposal. All right. Uh, let's just open the floor for questions. Anybody have questions or comments? We're, I guess the whole point of this is we're hoping not to just put it in our own reference wallet, but that other wallets might want to use something like this as well. Well, I can, I guess if we're not going to get any, uh, yeah, if we're not going to get any comments, then you've mm -hmm. done a good job of describing what this chip is. So, yeah, uh, maybe touching on that last part you mentioned, Dan, would be good. Is um, if one of these other wallets out there wanted to utilize this, what is you know the best process? What do you recommend them trying to integrate first? Is it an all or nothing thing? Is it they can cherry pick different aspects? Yeah, so I think that uh, really the, the main use case you would see being the most useful is uh, being able to request coin state without subscribing to it. Uh, so this message here, uh, for example, if you're spending a list of cats and you want to get the parent of those cats to have the lineage proof that you need to spend the cat, um, you can now do that without subscribing to those coin IDs. Um, so this you could use this message to do that. And then I think the next big step would be replacing the way that you sync uh, puzzle hashes currently with the new request puzzle state message, um, which will allow you to be more hardened against DOS attacks and reorgs as well. This would also allow you to be more comfortable when continuing where you left off syncing previously, um, as well as filtering out dust, which can greatly improve the performance of your syncing in the wallet. Perfect. Thank you. And then finally, uh, transaction updates are an optional feature that you can uh, add to your wallet if you want. And this would allow you to get notifications for when one of your coins has been spent and potentially update your wallet accordingly. Um, this also gives you the ability to implement replace by fee more effectively. You can now uh, get updates for transactions uh, in the mempool and then download the puzzle and solution using the peer protocol, modify the spend to include a higher fee and then resubmit it. And if at any point the transaction ID changes, you should get another update that that new transaction was added and replace that instead. Oh, that sounds great. The RBF is definitely a pain point for us. It's mm -hmm. hard to get it right. So any improvements are good. Is this, uh, so I know you're building kind of like an actual wallet sage around this this technology that you're that you're building here, but is it going to be available almost like an SDK or can other people just easily, I don't know, use the sage backend, so to speak, to, to do this kind of stuff themselves, like in scripting or things like that? Yeah, I do plan to have an implementation of it uh, in a Rust SDK that I'm building. Nice. Yeah, but I love, I will love that, I think. It's almost like, in fact, um, I don't know, I've heard like the wallet SDK, the enterprise wallet SDK, is that, where does this fit along with that? Um, or does it at all? Is this completely different? I don't believe CNI is doing a wallet SDK currently. Um, the SDK that I'm referring to is just a personal uh, library that I'm building. Okay, makes sense. I thought, and maybe Dan, you can speak to this. I thought there, maybe even on the roadmap or something, wasn't there like an enterprise SDK that was supposedly, for wallets supposedly being developed? Yeah. Or is that still separate? There was, uh, I'm not sure the exact status. I think I think we may have just moved on to what we're we're not quite sure the name of it yet. The cloud wallet or the enterprise wallet that we're yep. building. Okay. Yeah. That's that's what I'm thinking of. Okay. Cool. Yeah. But this may I assume that 
I mean, assuming that this goes well and is a good performance increase, I can imagine that possibly that would be ported over to that. Um, yeah, potentially. Cool. Um, the other thing yeah. I mentioned, I, I heard earlier you mentioned was the uh, subscribe limit. And that's one of the reasons I'm actually interested in this because I, I found that early on and was able to, there's actually a con, uh, setting in config where you can increase that. Uh, I think it's, I want to say it's like 200,000 subscription limit by default or something on a full node, but you can, you know, of course, increase that in the config. And that's the only way I've been able to get around to, to actually make some of my bigger wallets work, you know, because once they hit that limit, they, it actually, it absolutely just dies, like you said, and it won't sink anymore. So I totally get that part. Yeah, I believe for trusted wallets, well, it's 2 million by default and 200,000 for untrusted. That's right. In fact, I think if you look back in the history, I think I'm the one that suggested moving that up to 2 million. The, the, oh. the trusted version because oh. because of exactly my problem <laughs> mm. yeah I've, i'm personally a fan of reducing the number of derivations as much as possible but um, definitely increasing it as an option as well makes sense yeah i guess we have talked about optimizing the number of light wallets that we can support um in in the future but i yeah, I'm not sure if if we're still going in that direction or or not. But this this chip gets us at least some performance improvements. Yeah, I need to benchmark this more thoroughly than I have. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so uh, the chip currently is in uh, it's a draft, and we'll probably be able to move it up to review pretty soon once Brandon gets the last pieces of code in and it will likely stay there for a few weeks and it, it sounds like this is pretty close to being able to go able to go through if nobody has any issues with it or has any requests for us to add more stuff or change anything so get your reviews in soon mm -hmm. and we will move this one along most likely sounds good uh, any other before we before we stop, any other questions or comments? Sounds like no. Okay. Thanks, everybody, for joining. Thanks for pre presenting, Brennan. Thank you. See ya.